Welcome back everybody, it's me, Garmanza92, and we are back with MotoGP22. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a like on my channel and my video. If you do leave a like, thank you very much uh, to support my channel. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed already and you enjoy my content, we are going to continue to bring a lot more content to this channel and don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss any of my live videos as they drop on to the channel on YouTube. So yeah, we are back with MotoGP22. We're going to carry on with our Moto3 season. I don't even remember, to be fair, what race is coming up next. But um, we've had a recent run of form, uh, which has been relatively quite good. We've made a few mistakes in her ref, which was the last race, uh, which saw us fall a couple of places towards the end of the race which was unfortunate but that happens in racing we are still leading the championship so let's see if we can continue our championship fight in this season rightio so here we are we are back we have a uh, a crew chief that wants to be part of our team but he's got minus 12 on frame so we're going to reject that uh, we don't really want to do minus 12 frame considering it's only engine and frame that matter for this uh, for this bike for the Moto 3s. So yeah, I have also finally managed to um, to sit down and uh, and really think about building um, or sorry creating a number for our rider and a crash helmet for his uh, sort of signature look. So with that being said, I'm just going to check out our signature look if it's actually going to put on our crash helmet which it doesn't look like it's going to, which is a shame. Oh, you can just see it there underneath his arm. Don't really know why it's attached to the bike, and we're not really sure as to why he's standing inside the bike, which is a little strange. But yeah, you can kind of see it there. We're sporting the uh, the Sneak logo is the same as we did last year, although not actually uh, not sponsored by Sneak, but uh, a massive fan of their products. So yeah, I've also got a, uh, I've got a, you can't really see it because the game's being strange. Uh, I've also got a little bit of an 8-bit um, number there, just to sort of sport the, the theme of the channel as well. And uh, the only other thing I would like to do is to change our gloves to the same colour as our boots, because our knee sliders should still be blue. We could just about see them under, there, under the uh, under the mudguard there, because our riders decided to stand in front. Oh, there we go. So yeah, there we are. That is our rider. That is our crash helmet. We're still sporting my logo for the channel on top of the crash helmet. And we've got our number on the rear of the crash helmet there as well. Um, I did get the idea for the crash helmet, if you like, off of uh, off of the picture online I saw of a crash helmet. So uh, yeah, a little bit of change there to, to bring to the channel. A little bit of, as I say, finally managed to sit down and really think about creating a helmet rather than rushing into it and making something that, uh, in my opinion, wasn't really the best. Obviously, I'm still a massive fan of Star Wars. We are still sporting our Jedi Master tag on our rear leathers. But we head to France this time for the Le Mans circuit. And it's raining. Not ideal. And our controller is also low, so even not ideal. But, uh, yeah, so a wet, a wet circuit... Um, around Le Mans, which isn't a surprise it being Le Mans. Um, it's going to be different, obviously. Um, we didn't do too bad in the wet, if I'm honest, around Portugal. Uh, obviously a slight advantage that everyone kept falling off, but we shall see how we get on. Um, obviously we skipped straight now to FP1. Yeah, a wet circuit for France. We'll have to sort of see how we get on. We're going to skip Gav because they just talk about the same the same sort of things as they normally do as we check out some of the development tests. So we got tools of the trade, become familiar with your bike, riding at least 100 kilometers. We've got the track study, the top speed, clean lap, time attack, and lap by lap. So um, yeah, obviously we would like to try and do as many of those as we can, uh, as we are going to be staying with this team for the rest of the season. Hopefully we can move up to that monster, uh, sorry, that Yamaha camp, uh, the master camp, I think it was called the Master Camp Team in Moto2. Uh, hopefully that will leapfrog us into, into onto a Yamaha in the MotoGP season. So we'll just have to see 
how many sort of reputation points we can uh, we can get throughout the career. But I'm just going to jump straight out to uh, F3 practice now and uh, try and do as many laps as we can, try and get used to the track, um, get home back into the bike. I haven't played it, played this game for a while, so nearly a, probably a week I'd say that I haven't played this game. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how we get on through free practice. I know we'll jump straight back in with all of you when we have finished the free practice and just about to start qualifying. Is also the end of the wow, so it would session. appear that we have an absolute insane amount of pace around this circuit. It's been a circuit that I have previously enjoyed as well, to be fair. So with a bit of luck, we can convert that to a pole position. Uh, we are joined by John McVie in Moto, uh, Moto 3's Q2 session. And uh, Kaito Toba, our teammate, Taito Suzuki, Izan Guevara and Adrian Fernandez have qualified from Q1 to join us in Q2 as well. Um, Carlos Tatai, who I think is still the championship rival, uh, not entirely sure about that. It could be Andrew Mio, Mino now, I'm not 100% uh, not, uh, not sure. Uh, yeah, so... FP3, I actually went out on a, on a, a set of used uh, soft tyres and uh, still managed the 144. So I'm looking at a 143. Obviously, the temperature is different. The track conditions will be different as well. Uh, we're going to go out first of all on a set of soft softs um, just to sort of see how that does us, where that reckons uh, we're going to be for the race. Uh, not sorry, for the race. Um, for our qualifying pace, um, uh, that was my quickest lap was on a soft soft, uh, 143.6 I think that was, and a lap before that was a medium medium, so if we can't get the softs to work in these cooler conditions, we will switch to the medium, but hopefully they fare well. So I will jump in with our quickest lap and the lap we set in qualifying. Okay now then, so we follow the autopilot around the penultimate lap as we come into our Last couple of corners here, as you can see it's getting cloudy already, a uh, big shame really because we are really, really quick in the dry, um, obviously I don't know how that's going to stand for us in the wet, hopefully we've still got a little bit of, uh, of pace, be nice to get back onto the podium after our, uh, our disappointing haref. So we get onto the gas, uh, sorry get onto the brakes, quite nicely done through there. Didn't really want to be on them curbs on exit. Uh, it's also very easy to tuck the front end on that first break-in area. We go very wide there, but it's okay. So we'll pick up the later apex. So we come up under the sign and get onto the brakes. We go gently onto the brakes through here, just to try and pick up that wide line. We've got Izan Guevara as a marker, which isn't a, isn't a very bad marker, but... Um, Something I have noticed that in our free practice sessions is that they get in the way quite a lot through this circuit. So hopefully, hopefully Kavara doesn't get in our way. I don't think we're going to close him down by this uh, by this straight though. So that might be unfortunate. We're going to get onto the brakes. He is going to get in our way for our entry to this corner. A bit slow through there. That means we're going to catch him right where I don't really want to. Yeah, I don't really want to be with him at this side of the track. Can we get up the inside of him into our final corner? We can. We're just going to sort of try and sit him up there as he nudges my bike. And I can feel the car, feel the tyre rumble in there as we're going to set a 143.5 which I hope is quick enough, but we shall try and do another lap and just see if we can maximise any more speed from our KTM. Okay, so we were the only ones that went out on a soft from what I saw. A lot of them went out on the medium, so uh, yeah, maybe that, uh, that helped us out. But that 143.5 we set there on our first lap, even though Kavara got in our way, who qualified down in 12th place. John might be there in 11th, so well done to John. Shame he didn't quite get that top 10, but uh, yeah, it's unfortunate for him. Um, but yeah, so even though he did get in our way, we still managed to get a pole position lap. Hopefully that fares us well for the race. Obviously it is wet, so it's going to be tricky. 
I don't know if it's a wet track or whether it's raining. Okay, so it's a wet track, so that's not too bad. It's like it's at least it's not raining. We look at the look at the grid. There we are on pole position with our team around us. We look at Diego Moreira, who is uh, who is in second place after a bit of a, a freak qualifying session from him. If I'm honest, uh, we look at our development tests. So the only one I haven't done at the moment is uh, 57 kilometres. Purely and simply because I haven't needed to do that many uh, kilometres around here to be able to be competitive. So we haven't bothered doing them. Um, I am going to just change my traction control up to three. I'm going to leave the engine braking where it is and just hope that that doesn't do us doesn't do us disjustice. Obviously, we don't have um, our racing line on. I'm going to try and leave that off. Apologies if I turn it back on. We shall see how we can get on through the. Uh, through the race depends if we here are completely off track. Um, we've obviously not many lap, wet laps done. So yeah, with that being said, we've got the medium, medium, the wets. We've got full fuel. We're going to start our race as we look at the grid. We've got us in pole position. Dennis Boggia finishing the front row. Uh, Dennis Onchu there in fourth. Two um, sniper team side by side. Our first teammate down in 16th place. Xavi Artigas, who could be our title rival, as I can't quite remember. And uh, Anna Carrasco there and Joshua Watley, unfortunately picking up that last place on the uh, that last place on the grid there. So it's the French Grand Prix. let's head to the French Grand Prix and see if the lights go out and we start the Grand Prix. Here we go, clutch in, revs up, lights are on. As the lights go out, we start the French Grand Prix. So come on, let's see what sort of line we can get out the first corner can we make it round in the wet we have the pace in the dry do we have the pace in the wet into the first corner we get round the first corner and not bad at all if I do say so Dennis Onchu has made it up to second place there's been a crash in the first couple of corners already oh Dennis Onchu giving us a bit of a nudge there a bit naughty, Dennis. Gonna try and ride right round the outside of him. Very nice. Onto the acceleration. One tenth ahead of Dennis Onchu, who will catch us by the next corner, I would have said. No, maybe not. I was going to say, I would have thought he'd have had a little bit of a slipstream pull on that lap, but maybe not. Not that lap, sorry, that uh, that straight there. Right, gaps for three temps, but coming down as he's in our slipstream as we come up here, down this straight, we switch to power mapping two as I just switched it from three, just for that straight, just to try and get. Oh, I didn't think we were going to make that. Yeah, it switched it just to power mapping three, just to try and pull away from uh, from Dennis on true through that down that straight as he was in our slipstream and had the pull up the straight. Try and get around these corners nice and easy. Not too slow though. We do want to finish. Oh. As he says as he gets the controller rumbling through his hands as we push the front end a little bit too much. But we are across the line for the first lap and the gap is five tenths at the moment. Dennis Onchu and Jerry Masia finish the podium for the second. We're going to release the... Uh, accelerate through there just because it's wet and I don't think we'll have the grip to get round. Up the hill. We didn't make very much time. We didn't make any time. In fact, we lost time. Uh, through that little... Oh, through those turns ones and twos but going down the Chappelle we get a good line through there and a decent, a decent jump off the corner. We've got a good line through here as well. We bring it out wide and then try and bring the bike in. I'm just going to switch it down to the power map in two as we come out of this corner. Try and save some of that fuel for later on in the race. Just in case we need it. Dennis Onchu might get a last, a last late burst in the last couple of laps. At the moment we are lap two and the gap is 0 0.6. Six tenths of a second to Dennis Onchu who is gaining us on the straight. Oh, I'm not going to make that. Oh, just. 
just made that corner. Still half a second late. Oh, I didn't think I was going to make that corner either. Our rear brake is extremely cold. It isn't really doing a lot. Which is good, so I suppose it means that the rear end doesn't start skidding out on you. So, every positive in that. Final corner time of lap two. Out the corner. Power map in three. Just to try and get a little bit of drive, because the AI do have a better drive than us. Dennis on tube with the quickest lap of the race by three tenths of a second. Just going to turn it back down to power map in two, as we do come off the accelerator through here. Just a one. Slow us down as well for this corner, which we aren't going to make. No, nope, we didn't make it. We're going to pick up the track limits warning for that one. Just didn't make it round that corner. Well, rear wheel coming round on us there. Dennis Onshu, give us a little kiss from behind. Send us a little bit wide onto the kerb. And he's going to come round the right hand side of us. Or he's just going to ram me, in fact. Right, we're going to try and sit him up through here. Oh, he's hit the back of our tyre and he's gone down. He hit our rear wheel there. And that cost him. We were dragging him along. The gap now to Messina is 1.1 seconds. Oh, lost the rear grip there. Get the power out of the corner. Power back in three. We've got two laps of fuel. Wow, okay. Or extra two laps of fuel, so let's use it. The gap to Jao Messina is now a second. And Sergio Garcia is now in third position, picking up that last place on the podium as it stands. So we go round the chicane, out the corner, the gap's now to 1.3, onto the brakes, get it stopped, get it stopped, nicely done. Dennis Onshu there with the mistake, pushing a little bit too hard, he's a very aggressive rider anyway, but maybe a little bit too aggressive there in the wet. Uh, you don't want to be contact with other riders in the wet, it's, um, it's rather sketchy, luckily when he contacted us the first time, we managed to stay on the bike, and then it was the, uh, the second time that we nudged back after being a little bit unstable and going a little bit wide that he, uh, he then tried to gain a little bit too much time through the corner and, uh, yeah, made the mistake. As we make a mistake through there, but don't run off. Can't get that first corner. Can't get that, uh, can't get that nailed at the moment. So we go round Chappelle, out of Chappelle. This is where Dennis Onshu made the mistake and uh, came into contact with our bike. We go wide through there, pushing a little bit too hard because I can, I can see that Dennis Onshu has caught us back up after our first sector in this lap, which hasn't been the best. Much better line through there, mate. Power mapping three down this straight as he's only three tenths behind us. He'll have our slipstream. We'll pull to the inside a little bit just in case he tries a tries a bit of a lunge. Or oh, get the rear wheel off the ground. We don't want that. Don't want that in the wet. Much better line through there, mate. Jay Messia putting us under a bit of pressure. Messia's another rider who, to be fair to him, is fair. To be fair to him, is fair. But he's also one of those riders that isn't afraid to, uh, to stick a front wheel in. So we have to be careful with him right behind us here. As he's probably going to try and come past us now. Yes, he does. There he is. Oh, we're going to run wide. Going to run very wide. Oh, pick up a track limits warning for that one. And a long lap penalty. We pick up a long lap penalty for that one. We didn't lose enough time through there. We ran very wide and just stayed on the gas. Picked up a long lap penalty. That was my own fault. My own mistake. We could hear him coming. That cost us and pushed us into doing something silly. 
This is going to be difficult now then. We're going to have a long lap penalty. Where are we going to come out after our long lap penalty? So we start breaking into the long lap penalty, which I believe is here somewhere. Long lap penalty served. We've come out in fourth place. Just in front of Tatai Suzuki. Can we get back onto the podium in these last couple of laps? It's going to be a tall ask, I think. It's going to take a bit of concentration, so apologies if we go quiet. Oh, how the hell did we stay on that? Trying a little bit too hard with that front brake through there. Tato Suzuki come flying for a pass, that's there. We're battle for four for Tato Suzuki onto the final lap. 1.3 seconds is the gap to Sergio Garcia, so I think that's gone. Our podium chances have left us with running out of that turn one as we get a little bit of a nudge there from. Isan Guevara, which we repaid a favour. We're going to use the inside kerb. We're going to go slightly wide, uh, sorry, slightly cut that corner, mainly because he, uh, he nudged us into that corner, so we couldn't really do a great deal about that. We just managed to get Tatai Suzuki to miss our rear wheel there. Thank God. Every breaking into here, trying to make as much time up as possible. End up going deep and probably costing me more time than what it would have gave me anyway. However, we come in to the little bit of a hairpin. Down the main straight gaps at point 0.8. I think that's a little bit too much to ask unless they, uh, unless they manage to make a mistake into this final sector maybe a last corner lunge is in order I don't think we're going to be close enough though we're not going to be close enough I don't think oh, I got a little bit wide there went a little bit wide. We got fourth place though, after a long lap penalty, which uh, which is rightly so a long lap penalty there as well. It's unfortunate there, another mistake has cost us dearly again. Uh, I don't know how that works. Best lap, Jay Messia, 148.4. Our best lap, 148.1. So surely we should have got the fastest lap. But anyway. The mistake cost us there. We could hear Messiah come and put us under a little bit of pressure. Uh, went wide into turn one and straight over the curbs, and unfortunately, uh, didn't didn't come off the gas enough. Really, we probably should have let Messiah pass, but that is something we now know for the next race. So we move on. Anyway, we are still 44 points in front of Sergio Garcia, who is our our championship contender. Uh, with that result there for Jay Messiah, that's put him up by five places uh, to now 65 points. So we skip on as a look at our team who are also uh, minus 19, or sorry, plus 19 points in front of Gas Gas Aspar. So we pick up our reputation. Unfortunately, we only get enough reputation there to deal with a fourth place position. We didn't get the, uh, we didn't get the podium place, but we just still picked up some vital points there for the championship after a long lap penalty. We didn't accomplish 100 kilometers, but we're not really that bothered because we passed everything else and we've got plenty of research points to do us anyway. So let's just have a quick look at our frame as we've only got two more frames that can be done. Better reactivity, I think we will go with. Uh, so let's go with that, that's another seven weeks. Wow, okay. Um, that is it for the minute, as you can see. So we shall advance to the next weekend where I think will be Magello. Do we have anything else? We have a chief engineer, minus 30, 37 for engine. No, definitely not. Uh, yeah, so that is it. Um, we, uh, again, made a mistake, cost us dearly. 
long lap penalty there. We served our long lap penalty, came out in fourth place. Unfortunately, just a little bit too much of a gap there to break down to Sergio Garcia. But let's see if we can uh, get back to not making as many mistakes in Mugello and hopefully get back onto that podium place. Uh, I just want to check. I think we haven't been on the podium now for two races. So we were on the podium for four races in a row and then we were eighth place in Jerez after again mistakes and then um, and then Messia there picking up the, uh, the win and we picking up fourth place after that long lap penalty in our previous race that you guys have just witnessed. So yeah, let's head to Mugello in the next race. That is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you do, thank you all very so much. I do appreciate all the support you got. And please feel free to share and subscribe away so we can help this channel grow. Um, and thank you all so much. Uh, but yeah, don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos as they drop onto the channel. Um, with the new F122 coming out very soon as well, comes out at the end of this month. Uh, looking forward to doing that and bringing that to the channel. Uh, I have been playing a lot of F121 uh, just by myself with my steering wheel. So yeah, I look forward to bringing F122 to the channel. Um, if that's something that you guys are looking forward to as well, please drop a comment on the video below. And uh, yeah, for that being said, I'll see you all in that next video.